one thing I've realized is that I need more space on my Mac product, my MacBook, because I had to delete some reject videos and some outtakes so that I can upload a new video at the same quality. That's not something I like doing. However, I don't know how to get more memory on this shit. It's a Mac. Whatever. I've thought about how... First off, there's three heuristics I'm going to put out there. If you can call them heuristics. First and foremost, there is social. Then there is non-social. Next, and last, there is anti-social. And all of these will describe id, ego situations, sort of our neurotic holding patterns and narcissism that we engage in on a day-to-day -day basis when we try to obtain our ids. Let's throw out the first two, which is drinking and smoking. We usually attribute these vices to things that are inherently antisocial. There's people that are addicted to tobacco or sometimes they can't even stop smoking weed. And there's some people that love alcohol. And there is a social way to do it. It's some people only drink or smoke when they're around other people who are doing the same thing and it's just a means of socializing for them. It's trying to go into the other person's wavelength. After all, being sober in a room full of non-sober people can be quite disturbing. Or not disturbing enough. So there is an importance in that. Next, there's people that do it non-socially and they're fine. For now, at least. And then there's some people that do it anti-socially. And the best way to describe this would be, alright, they're in the middle of work or school or some public interaction. And all they can think about is, okay, I can't wait till this is over because I want to go ahead and I want to drink or smoke. And then they, they're basically stuck waiting for the next phase of their day so they can go back to that neurotic holding pattern or that issue they have. That's when it truly becomes an addiction. It becomes something of a chemical narcissism. Somewhat of a chemical narcissism. And that's problematic. It truly is. That's not a good phase. When you're thinking that way, um, you're, you're developing a bit of a problem. And there's two ways to handle a problem. You can either ignore it or you can try to find a solution. That's a half-ass explanation, but there you go. And then there's some things that are inherently not social, but they're either non-social or anti-social. They can never be social. Like, for example, beating your meat. I can't think of a time where people go together and hang out just to beat their meat and they only get to do it when they're together. I mean, don't tell me if there is a situation like that because then I'm going to feel like I had no childhood and it's too late to have that anxiety. Or maybe not. There's like compensation for that, but I don't want to deal with that kind of compensation. Now moving on to the next phase, we're going to talk about the internet. And the internet is has always been since kids got into it. I mean, I remember when the internet was a '90s thing. I would usually go to a, per, a website on TV, like let's say CartoonNetwork.com, and I would play the little flash games on there. I was a big fan of playing those crappy ass flash games on my slow ass computer and some of them were really fun like 
I would dead go back to that website right now. Maybe once this video is over. And I encourage you too if it still exists. Because every website basically had a games page for the kids. They were really smart that way. And I think it was effective because I loved Cartoon Network. I remember doing the same thing for anything, even Lunchables. Which, that's not good eating, guys. Their food is disgusting. But, any website I'd find. Hell, even Nick had some fun-ass games. Some silly ones, too. That's what got me in. And, that was a good place to lock children in. Where, people that you were using the internet in the 90s and early 2000s, they were in it for the real shit. Not this, uh... Super thing. However, kids ended up finding out about that other side of the internet, and they started enjoying that, too. They started enjoying the little intricacies, such as the message boards. I remember before I had the appreciation for YouTube, I was on the message boards. That was my thing. Or online gaming with real stuff, like... That crappy ass game RuneScape, MMORPGs, and things of that nature. I'm guessing that's how stuff like 4chan, social networking sites, and all this other bullshit got on its way. And what I realized is that all these kinds of things, they all suck. The same jokes I've saw in MySpace with the boy character and the girl character that have the flirtation ability of a second grader trying to be dramatic and they die at the drop of a hat. They don't eat their burger in less than 15 minutes, they die. Um. <laughs> like, like this if you cry every time, or what was it, I had... He was bigger than your dick, says girl. Boy says, well, I have Jordan's fresher than your pussy. Like this if you laughed. You would see them in text statuses on MySpace, or we would see them on little like pages made for Facebook. It's in specificity. Uh, and an Instagram with four panel memes, which really pisses me off. Rage comics, too. That's another thing I dislike. I miss... When pictures didn't have white text on the top or bottom. Whenever I look at someone taking, you know, stu making a stupid face for a picture. Because they're going to add text on the top and bottom for something. For some for four panel meme. I always think, what would happen if you take out the text and just look at it like a normal picture? It looks stupid, right? I love those videos where I stop and talk to the phone for a while, because you can tell I'm pissed. But anyway, yeah. Kids have flooded the internets, and on, on doing that, new problems have arise. For starters, we're dealing with a rise in... Uncreative behavior, like whores. You got people my age spreading their legs for others. Because they're reaching their sexual maturity at different rates. Like, my sexual maturity is, isn't is nearly as fast as some of these freshmen. These black and Hispanic freshmen, too. I mean, I'm Hispanic, too, but... They got the right ingredients because they're young and they're ready. <laughs> That's basically what it is, man. These people have kids. By the time I get some hair on my nuts, damn. It's ridiculous, too. It's These people are fucking up their lives. And it's just showing us that another reason why 
Western civilization needs to stay here. Because the United States has been constructed with whites in mind. They wouldn't expect you to reach this level of maturity so quickly. And we're pushing adolescent to its 30s, which is a rate that's not meant to happen. Adolescence is supposed to be a relatively short stage. Yet we're pushing it onto its 30s with this heightened education. And we're seeing through that this goes to people of other races of ethnicities that develop quicker. That's not a good thing. You're essentially putting everyone out of their natural clock. I shouldn't have to start my life at the age of 30. But you see, that's where the antisocial part comes in. We're being antisocial, and we're being placed in this forever young state of mind, where I see 50-year-olds taking the four-panel memes, which are supposed to be like relatable funny blogs, where, don't you hit it when your mom leaves your room and she forgets to close the door fully? Nigga, you're fucking 15, you still live with your mom? Suck my dick. That's all I gotta say, suck my dick. This is Mr. Wonka7. The internet is antisocial. Why is it antisocial? It's antisocial because... If you're antisocial, if you're forever young, then that means you're gonna keep consuming, you're not going to... Work a day in your life, and that's how everybody wants it. Because it's your human right that's being delivered. Suck my dick, little niggas and babes. I'm about to go. <clears throat>